Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma LaFave and today I'm going to give you tips on how I draw my flowers by doing an example of an anemone flower. So let's jump right in and get started. Anemone, such a weird word. Okay, so today I'm going to show you the basics of how I do my line drawings for my flowers. These are a couple examples that I have for a Patreon exclusive tutorial. But today I kind of wanted to just talk about drawing simple flowers and how to shade them to look a little bit more detailed and realistic. So I'm just drawing in my Etcher Lab cold press watercolor sketchbook. I really like the sketchbook because while it's cold pressed and usually a cold pressed paper is a bit more toothy, this is nice and smooth so it works really well for pen and pencil. Um, I'm going to be using just a regular pencil. I have this Tombow pencil. I don't really have any recommendations on what type of pencil to use. This is just what I have. My kneaded eraser by Faber-Castell is like one of my favorite things ever. Definitely suggest getting one of these. And then for the actual drawings, I love to use my Pigma Micron pens. I have a size 05 and a 01. And the difference is the tips, the nibs are different sizes. I like to do the big line work with the thicker nib and then do my shading with the thinner one. So that's why I use two. If you don't have two pens, that's totally okay. You can always use heavy pressure to make it thicker and then lighter pressure to do the lighter lines. Um, but yeah, so today I am going to be drawing a simple anemone. I'm going to show you how I do it and then how I shade it to make it look more detailed. And this kind of shading where you're placing the shadows is the exact same for where you're painting with watercolor. So listen carefully and see if you guys can translate to this to watercolor later. Okay, so I always like to start out my sketches with my pencil first. And I'm just going to start by doing a simple center. I'm just going to do a little round circle, kind of like an oval. It's not too flattened, but it's more of an oval shape. And then I'm going to have another ring around it for the anemone because it has these little uh, lines with dots at the end. We're just going to kind of just place that outer ring like that. Okay, and then we're going to start drawing some of the petals. So I'm going to start going this way. I'm just going to draw a line so I know that's the center of the petal and I'm just going to slightly curve it because all petals are curved, right? They don't just stick straight out. They all have some sort of curve to them. So always slightly curve your lines. And I'm just going to kind of go around this line, making it a bit thicker at the top, coming in slightly towards the base. And the petal can be kind of jagged at the top. There's one petal, okay? And then I'm going to do another one. I'm going to leave a little space, a little bit of space because we're going to have one behind it. Okay, I'm going to have one going this way. Like that. I'm going to have one coming up this way. Now, this is a little bit on a curve, so the ones on this side are going to be a little bit shorter and flatter. This can actually kind of be curved a bit. Like that, and then kind of come in like so. I'm going to do another one like this. And you can even have a little bit of it curved in like that. Okay, and then I'm going to have one kind of behind here, another one behind here, behind here. And behind here. Okay, so there I have some of the base of my petals. I'm also going to have a couple that are in on top here, but I'm going to make them a bit flatter, like I said. So I'm going to have it come out. It's like they're kind of curved up. One there. We can have one over here. And it doesn't have to be symmetrical. You don't have to have the exact same amount everywhere. I have one over here. Just some smaller ones. Now I'm going to take my bigger nibbed pen, my size 05, and I'm going to go around all of the petals. So the ones that are overlapping, I'm just going to make sure I go around those petals first. So the ones on top, I'm going to go around these first. I'm 
I'm actually going to fold this one. So I'm just going to do another line here, kind of like it's folded up a bit. This one's folded up as well. Then like that. Okay, so we have our outline here. And now I'm just gonna do the center before we erase some of the lines. So for the center, the center of the anemone is a little bit more dense. It looks almost like a dome. So I'm just gonna kind of just sketch out this dome shape we're going to have it a little bit flatter on this side and more of a dome shape just because of the perspective. And I'm just going to do these little tiny lines like this. It's made up of these tiny little lines. And as they go out to the sides, I'm just going to curve them. And this gives the illusion that this dome shape is like more 3D because if they're all just straight lines, then it won't make sense. I'll show you what I mean on a different piece of paper in a second. So as we reach right here, they're straighter. And then as we start to go around the side, they're going to curve a bit. And then on this side, they're going to curve this way, little C curves. And then I'm going to start to go a little bit lighter with my pen. So it's not as dark here. And that's going to give a little bit of light to it. So I'm just going a little bit lighter there towards the top, okay? And then I'm gonna go back in and make it darker around the base. So I'm just gonna do some more lines, especially around down here. Okay, I want that to remain a bit lighter. And then the darkest, you can even kind of color in right there. All right, and then the parts here around are those little lines that kind of stick out with that have the little balls at the top, dots at the top, not balls. Okay, so I'm just gonna curve it around. And as we get to this side, see how they're on a curve? I'm gonna do really tiny ones like this because those little dots at the bottom are gonna be kind of facing upwards because of the angle of the flower. I always suggest too, like if you're unsure about angles and perspectives, you can also look at a reference photo to be sure of these things. So I'm just doing some dots and then I'm gonna do these little circles around the tips here. Like so, okay? Like that, you see how it kind of changes it? Okay. Now that we've done the outline, we can erase all those lines inside. Uh, a tip, <laughs> make sure that your ink is dry before you do this because you do not want to smudge it. So I'm just going to erase it like so. And we can begin some of the shading. Also, if you want to do the little leaves underneath, you can always take your pencil first if you wanted to. They have these like kind of a uh, jagged kind of leaves. They come, come out and in and out and in. They're thin and jagged. We're just kind of doing these like little points. Always curve that vein line, okay? You never want a straight one. I'm gonna show you in just a second before we actually start shading inside. We'll just do two little ones, what I mean. Okay, let me just go around. Okay, now before we get into the shading part, I'm just gonna show you some do's and don'ts. Here are some things not to do. So let's say we have a petal here. Never, let's do a couple petals. I don't even know what flower this is. <laughs> never when you are doing the shading or even just lines, never have it straight lines like this. That gives no movement to your flowers, okay? try and curve them even just so slightly just a little bit of a curve it just gives a little bit of movement even these little ones okay slightly curve them not straight lines no to this it doesn't 
really makes sense. It just gives it no movement. It's like they're very structured. Always curve, okay? And then so I usually do one long line down the middle and then they start to get slightly smaller, but they're always slightly curved. Another thing you want to make sure when you are shading, so say we have a petal behind. If there is a petal behind two petals, then it's always gonna cast a shadow. The petal behind is always gonna have more of a shadow. So again, start with your line, and then this shading on this petal is gonna be darker almost all over. Not all over, but except for the tips. Okay, so I like to add some extra shading, especially right in between where they meet. And again, curving it. Okay, and it just really makes those ones on top pop. And I always like to add a little bit of lines to the tips as well. Also gives movement. And again, don't make it straight. That doesn't make sense. You have to curve it. So if it's on this side of the petal, you're going to curve it inwards. They're always curving inwards. So a petal is kind of like rounded, right? Okay, so those are things that I need you to remember when doing this. All right, so let's start with the shading for our anemone. Okay, so I'm going to grab my smaller one. And again, with what I was talking about, always have it curved. So decide which way it is curving. So you can just kind of look at your petal, which way is curved, or but you can always decide. So if I do a line that's kind of curved this way, it's going to kind of give the illusion that this petal is going downwards. If I have the curve going this way, it's going to give the illusion that the petal is kind of cupped underneath like this. So either this way or this way is going to change the direction the petal's going. Now you can go either way with this, but I think I'm just going to go like it's pointing upwards a bit. And it's just the slightest little curve. Okay, so there's a slight curve to it. And I'm just going to use my pen to do this little shading. Now it looks a little odd with just the shadow there. So like I said, I'm going to have some lines, especially in these little dips where I, they kind of go in. That would create a bit of a shadow. So that's kind of where I like to put them. And then again, see how this petal is over top of this one. I might add a little bit more shading right behind here. And then right at the base where they all kind of meet this center. Okay. So there's one and you don't have to do a lot of shading. It's totally up to you how intense you want to make it, but I don't think you could ever have too, too much shading. <laughs> okay, next one, because this one's kind of flipped up, I'm going to have this one flipped up as well. And again, it's behind a little petal over here, so I'm just going to make it a little bit darker. Right behind there, just a little bit more. darkness and I'm just curving my lines like so. Okay, this one. And you just keep going. You're always going to have the most shadow right at the base of your petals. And then any that are kind of behind another. Okay, so we're starting off with our top ones. This one is curving towards us. So I'm going to do just a slight curve like this. Okay, and then I'm also going to bring up some shadows from under here. Just a little bit of line work there and then inside here a bit. Like that. This one is going to be behind these two. So we're going to have a bit more shadow or shading on here, especially at the base. Kind of where those other ones are meeting it.
You guys should see me at my desk right now. I'm like totally contorting my body because I usually turn my my sketchbooks or my paper that I'm working on, but I can't really do that because it's of filming. <laughs> like that, see the shading in there? And then behind here a bit. Doesn't have to be a lot, but I just like to make them a little bit darker when they're behind another petal. Like even like just thicken the line just a little bit. And then this part's flipped up here, so I'm just gonna do a little bit there. Maybe a bit of shading in there. Okay. This one back here. Now, if it doesn't really go to a point and it's all kind of flat there, I'll just do some little lines kind of going across. Again, always longest towards the middle. This is just how I do it. I mean, there's so many other ways to draw and I don't like to think there's one way to do things. So if you see an art another artist do something differently, that's totally cool. There. This one's going to be dark because it's in between. Like that. like that. Okay, and then our leaves, I'm going to do our little vein down the center, just make it a little bit thicker. And then again, just a bit of shading towards the base. There would be a bit of a shadow cast from the petals. And then I might just do a little bit in between. I don't want to do too much on this. It's totally up to you. Just gonna kind of darken those little corners. Like so. And then you can always darken any areas you find could use a little bit extra. But that's basically it. That's kind of how I go through this. Um, and that's the anemone. If you're interested in more line drawings, I have this one as a Patreon exclusive tutorial for only $3 a month. You get tutorials like this and two others. I do three a month so far, and I really hope you guys enjoy them. Now, once you've mastered drawing your flowers, add a little bit of watercolor and see what you can do with some line and wash and just have fun with it. So let me know if you guys have any questions below and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on all my other platforms for tons more content. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.